Hello, good ancestors. Welcome to this week's letter from Layla. This week's letter is not a written note because I'm actually on a weekend vacation, a weekend getaway with my family. So myself, my husband, our children, and my parents have taken a quick, much needed uh, break, a much needed trip. Um, and we are on this beautiful island. In front of me is the ocean and it's extremely relaxing here. Um, but Fridays are usually the day that I write my letter from Leila. And so um, I thought, why not shoot a quick video because I didn't want to be holed away writing while everybody is out having fun and enjoying themselves. So today what I wanted to share about is this concept of what it means to be a living ancestor who is, who is alive today, right? Um, you'll know if you've been following my work for a while that when I talk about the idea of being an ancestor, it's not um, just restricted to having children and having descendants and seeing yourself only as a blood ancestor, but also recognizing that there will be people who will come after you, that there are generations that are coming up after us, and that the way that we show up in the world has a direct impact on those generations um, through our actions, whether those actions and the way that we live our life was consciously or intentionally chosen or not. And so when I talk about the idea of being a good ancestor, it doesn't mean having achievements, it doesn't mean um, you know, becoming an icon, it doesn't mean becoming a public figure, it just means recognizing that your life matters, your impact in the world is real, um, whether it's on six people or six million people, and that we have a choice on whether um, we intentionally want to choose what that impact might be, or if we're just going to go through our lives day to day and, and hope for the best, right? So the, the idea of being a good ancestor is taking intentional action. And something that I've been sharing over the last um, couple of uh, letters from Layla is the idea of living from a place of hope and showing up in hopefulness, practicing hopefulness. And so that's what it means to me right now, as I think about what it means to be a good ancestor, that's what it means. And so something I've been thinking about um, this week, particularly as I'm here now on this break with um, my children and my parents, is that I sit right in the middle of those two generations of the elders who are my parents and the descendants who are my children. I'm bang in the middle. I'm the, the bridge that connects the two. And I think when we think about this idea of being a good ancestor, that is such a key concept, I think, is, is seeing ourselves as a bridge that we are the middle point between the people who have come before us and the people who are coming up after us. And a bridge is really, really important, right? Because it's how we get from one side to the other. When people have asked me in interviews, do you think that we'll be able to create an anti-racist world or post-racist world in, in, in this lifetime, in our lifetimes? I often say, no, I, I don't. And that's not because I'm not hopeful or I'm not, um, or I'm trying to be contrarian or pessimistic, but I think that it's realistic to think about how long the systems we have been living in have been maintained for and that it's going to take just as much time to undo them and that that time must include a mass conscious awakening. Um, and that, that this moment, even though we've seen incredible growth this year in uh, people's awakening to the existence of white supremacy and racism, we're still a long way from that. But, you know, what does give me hope and what keeps me going is the fact that I am the bridge to my children and I'm the bridge to any descendants that come um, after that generation. And so I think about what is my role here in this lifetime now? What am I supposed to be doing? What bricks am I supposed to be laying? What foundation am I supposed to be setting? Um, and how do I choose to leave an impact of, of legacy and of, uh, sorry, a, 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 how do I choose to leave a legacy of healing and of liberation for those who are coming after, after us? And so seeing ourselves as a bridge, I think is a really important, uh, it's really important symbology. It's really good um, metaphor to have of yourself that especially when sometimes when we're doing this work, there's a lot of heartbreak and there's a lot of frustration and impatience um, because we know that this work is overdue. We know that we shouldn't have the world that we live in now. We know that these oppressive systems shouldn't exist. And we also know how hard it is for us as individuals to be doing the work, showing up every day, challenging our mindsets, 
um, challenging the, way, the dynamics of society, challenging systems, you know, maybe losing relationships, um, and really having to reform our identity. And so that work is really hard, and it's an everyday work. We're not rewarded for it. Um, and we, like I said, we don't know that we will see the massive impact of it in this lifetime. But if we see ourselves as bridges in the same way that those who came before us, people who sacrificed um, their time and their lives really um, for civil rights movements around the world, they were the bridge so that we can have the world that we have right now. And I'm really grateful, beyond grateful, that they did the work in their lifetime so that we can have the world that we have now so that so with me as a person who is black and as a woman you know that there are certain liberties that I have there are certain freedoms that I have there are certain ways that I can show up in the world that I would not have been able to if they had not been the bridges to this world if they had not done the work in their lifetime and so we are those bridges for that we are passing it along we have taken the baton and we are passing um, we are passing it onto the next generation by doing the work in this generation and and so when you get when you feel hopeless when you feel like is this is this making a difference does this really matter um, yes it matters because if it didn't we wouldn't have the world we have right now and if we are able to have the world right now because of those who came before us imagine what world we can create for those who will come after we are gone and you know, it, it's also part of seeing ourselves as part of the whole story of, of humanity and understanding that my liberation is linked with the liberation of those who came before and the liberation of those who will come after we are gone. And that's a really beautiful thing to see ourselves in the biggest story of life and the biggest story of humanity. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, I encourage you to share this video with anybody who you think it might inspire. And I'll be back next week with more letters from Layla.